Hey, good morning, everybody. Now, you've probably seen the story in the UK, uh, in a school in Rye in East Sussex, of uh, some students who were berated and told off and threatened by their teacher because they wouldn't accept that one of their classmates identified as a cat. And the students were talking absolute sense that if someone identifies as a cat, then that's absolutely crazy. But the teacher wasn't having it and was trying to threaten them, saying she was going to report them, or even that they should find another school because they wouldn't accept that someone identified as a cat. I think people looking at the UK from outside will think that we've gone totally and completely mad. Although I would imagine that this kind of thing is happening all over the English speaking world. It seems to be that the whole English speaking world, the whole collective West, if you like, has gone completely balmy down this road of identity politics. First, with gender uh, identity and so on. Now, anyone can identify as anything. And people are afraid to question that because there have been laws put in place to um, shore up and support people who just say things that are completely barking mad. And um, if you speak up against this nonsense, then you're called homophobic or transphobic or hateful or bigoted. Uh, and, and even worse than that, People have been thrown out of their jobs for standing up against it, even saying, you know, things on social media that they don't agree with this gender ideology, which we've got. And this week, a teacher who I, I've met, actually, Kirsty Higgs, um, who's represented by uh, the Christian Legal Centre, won her appeal uh, in an employment tribunal against a school who fired her for saying something on Facebook, uh, on social media, that she didn't agree with gender ideology, that uh, you can't change your gender. If you're a male, you're a male. You stay male. You can't become a female. If you're female, you can't become a male. If you're human. Okay, I know there are some small number of species like seahorses where they can change their sex. Okay, but if you're a human being, you cannot change your sex. And there is no such thing as gender that is different to biological sex. This is a concept uh, started by John Money in the 1950s and 1960s, who did lots of very unethical experiments on children, with the result that uh, one of the people that he did these experiments on um, killed themselves when they found out what had been done to them, uh, and they later on in life in their, when they were a, uh, a young adult, unfortunately. Uh, but from then, it's been um, taken up, promoted, propagandized, mainstreamed by Judith Butler and other uh, academics at crazy universities in the United States that should know better, um, but don't. And here we are. The practicalities of this are now working out in our society today. And uh, I think the vast majority of people are absolutely disgusted and appalled by this. And this is now exemplified by two 13-year-old girls who were speaking absolute sense with a teacher, I don't know if she's in her 40s or 50s, who was trying to threaten them in the most horrible Orwellian manner that if they did not affirm unreality, uh, unscientific unreality that they would be punished for that and that they should that they were deplorable and that they shouldn't even be in that school if they wouldn't affirm this nonsense this is where we are today um, there are certain laws in the UK that need to be repealed and as leader of the Heritage Party we're the only party that has been saying this for uh, years since we started three years ago. I was saying it before I even started the Heritage Party that we need to repeal or reform the Equality Act to get rid of all the things in it which um, bulk up gender identity. The idea that 
uh, gender reassignment is a protected characteristic. The public sector equality duty, which requires everybody in any organization that is a public, a government state run organization or has a contract with a state run organization or institution to um, foster good relationships with anyone with a protected characteristic or communities with protected characteristics. So if anyone is even thought to be slightly unfriendly or hostile to trans people, for example, or, or women or black people or Muslims or gay people, whatever, anyone with a protected characteristic, even if you just say something, which is a little comment, you can be fired, got rid of, um, and, uh, you know, your contract can be ended if you're a contractor. If you're an employee, uh, you can be yeah, fired because that the institution has the duty um, to foster good relations with what is so-called, you know, in this case, the trans community. So this is what's in law. And it's been in law since 2010. This law was created by Harriet Harman of the Labour Party, but it was put into law. It was signed into law by Theresa May of the Conservative Party. It was it was the last act that went through Parliament um, in the last days of the Blair Brown administration. But it was only ratified uh, and came into force six months later in October uh, 2010. Theresa May and her Conservatives, no, it was David Cameron, sorry, but Theresa May was Home Secretary at that time, sorry, that, that was, a, so she did have the um, jurisdiction over it, but yeah, it was David Cameron was the Prime Minister. They could have stopped it from coming into force, but they didn't. But then we've also got the Gender Recognition Act uh, 2004, uh, whereby someone can change their gender, which is absolute nonsense. Um, there's been moves to actually do a super gender recognition act. Uh, they're trying to put this through in Scotland first, but it will come in England uh, if we're not careful. And that will say that anyone can change their gender just like that. They don't need a doctor to certify it. They don't need to live as the other gender for two years. They can just say one day, oh, I'm a woman now and everyone has to treat them as a woman. That isn't law yet in England. It's not law yet in any part of the UK, but they want to try and bring that in. Fortunately, there's been such a pushback on this nonsense that I think they, the fake conservatives in England realise they can't get this through without you know, massive um, opposition. Maybe even their own MPs uh, would rebel against it. Um, you've also got the um, uh, what the... Children and Social Care Act 2017, and that makes relationships and sex education compulsory in all schools, uh, in all secondary schools, and relationships education in primary schools. But, you know, they basically teach the same stuff because now kids are getting disgusting uh, materials in their school lessons, you know, whether it's relationships with or without the sex education bit. Um, it doesn't matter. The, these kind of materials are, and, and coloured picture books for children showing very, very explicit things are being given to primary school kids um, as well as secondary school kids. Not that that's good. You know, no kid should have this. You know, I was a teacher um, for nearly 20 years before I got into politics. I was a science teacher, chemistry teacher. I, I used to teach reproduction uh, to 12, 13-year-olds. So you teach the biological facts about reproduction. That's it. That's all they need to know. Uh, anything else, teaching kids about sexual acts which are non-reproductive, totally should not be in school whatsoever. Completely should be prohibited in school. And uh, we would, in the Heritage Party, introduce a Child Protection Act, uh, Hungarian style, to prevent the promotion of these kind of ideologies and practices uh, to children, to minors under the 18, whether it's in school or whether it's on uh, broadcasters and broadcasters on television or on social media as well. But we need to do this to protect children uh, from 
this kind of nonsense. But it seems actually fantastic that children are now just had enough of it and are rebelling. You know, we've seen this, these two fantastic girls in Sussex, um, in England, uh, rebelling against a teacher, holding their own against a teacher who is spouting nonsense. This person should not be a teacher uh, who is just talking absolute rubbish. We've had um, some children I saw on another video over in California in the USA. Amazing, California, the center of nonsense in America, and probably New York is as well, and Chicago. These big, these big cities in America are just filled up with, you know, absolute uh, cultural rubbish, I have to say. But yeah, kids in California rebelling because they've just had enough of the, the pride's flag and all this nonsense being shoved at them all the time. Diversity in every lesson. They, they turn up for a maths lesson. They want to learn about maths and they're getting <laughs> alphabet nonsense uh, thrown at them, rainbow flags and with all this other junk on the, the edge um, thrown at them. Absolute rubbish. So fantastic that, that kids are rebelling against this. And it's isn't it amazing that today to rebel... You, you're a conservative. You're, the kids are rebelling by being conservative, by being Christian against all of this, you know, pretty demonic, <laughs> degenerate nonsense. Um, I think it's fantastic. So power to the elbows of the children who are rebelling against degeneracy and mutilation uh, in the schools and everywhere. And, you know, in the Heritage Party, I totally support them uh, in this. You know, we've been speaking about this for years and years. Others are speaking about it now, which is a good thing, uh, because this is now turning into a movement against this nonsense of gender ideology. And, you know, um, we we stand against it with, with a lot of other people as well. Uh, there's other groups that I wouldn't agree with on everything um, that they stand for. In fact, there, there's some groups that are against this that I would completely disagree on, on other things. Um, and this is a point to make, that we're now, what we've got going on in the Western world is a revolution. You know, it's it's a revolution that you can go back 50 years, or you can go back 100 years, you can go back 250 years, it doesn't, you know, you, you could take different starting points, you know, you've got you know, 60 years ago, you have the new left, the sexual revolution, the Western cultural revolution, which was a revolution, it was an absolute cultural revolution in the 60s that overturned uh, the values that we've had before, or, or, you know, there was a severe, significant attack on Christian, conservative, traditional family values, and the revolution that tried to completely overturn it, to attack family values, to attack um, normality, and so on. You know, whether it was to do with, you know, gay rights, women's rights, whatever, abortion was brought in, and, uh, and so on. And then later on, you've got uh, marriage redefined, which is wrong. And uh, now you've got the gender ideology coming up, and this is the, the forefront of the revolution at the moment. You could go back 100 years to the Frankfurt School and Gramsci, the cultural Marxists, when they started off and turned their um, attention of, of Marxist praxis from e economics to the culture to try to undermine the culture of Western nations that rejected communism in order to make our cultures and nations stink and to invert the uh, values of all the institutions so that our societies will be so demoralized and degenerated and corroded that then uh, we hadn't got a clue what we stood for because all of our foundations, Christian foundations, would be uh, washed away, corroded away and then by destroying the culture, then it would create the conditions to bring in communism, Marxism, and uh, and all that they want to do, because we wouldn't have, the civil society would be completely corroded and corrupted. So this is the process that started 100 years ago. Or you could go back to Marx, 
Originally, with the Communist Manifesto, of course, you know, Marx wants to get rid of the family, get rid of the nation, get rid of private property, uh, nationalise everything, and would do that by creating divisions in society, by uh, making people feel uh, that they are oppressed. So what we have now, the forefront of this revolution that's gone on from Marx through the Frankfurt School, through the, the new left of the 60s, is now the front line of this is gender ideology and the trans people saying that we're oppressed victims and everything needs to be um, changed around in order to accommodate a tiny, tiny minority of people who will be oppressed if, if people don't accept that uh, they're a woman if they're a man or they're a cat if they're a human, for example. Or you could go back to the French Revolution, 1789. Um, of course, the Jacobites doing terrible things in France. A quarter of a million people executed, including most of the, the priests and so on at the time. And they appropriated all the churches and state buildings and collectivized them. Um, but that didn't bring uh, paradise. It brought poverty and hunger. And things were so bad in France, they needed Napoleon to put things right. That shows you how dreadful the revolution was, uh, you know, at its modern inception. You, you know, you, you could even go back further than this, because this is actually a spiritual battle. And a lot of people recognise that what we are fighting, yes, we're fighting politically against this. This is coming in through media. It's being fought in, in the fields of education and business and so on. But this is a spiritual battle. As the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, uh, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against the powers, against the principalities, against the rulers and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's um, So we are fighting a spiritual battle, which ultimately will go back to the cross of Christ when <laughs> the evil forces got Christ crucified but then in that God had a plan which was greater than they could work out and through that we have salvation if we uh, trust in Christ and we obviously are on the winning side because although they thought the the powers that be thought they had defeated Christ he won um, because through his death we have forgiveness for our sins and uh, redemption for our souls if we trust in him. I recommend everybody uh, to turn to Jesus Christ, um, confess your sins, be saved, get salvation, <laughs> get redemption in him and the weapons you need to fight in this spiritual battle. And, and you can even go back before that, you know, and uh, if you look at the Bible, there's uh, the, the famous um, um battle if you like spiritual battle between elijah and the forces of baal i think it's one kings uh 17 you can read that um you know the the satanic priests and the, and the, and the priest of god and elijah won of course in that battle um although it was a tough battle to fight obviously spiritually and it needs a lot of trust in god uh, to fight that but that's an aside uh, you know to what's going on now that's just saying you know how far do you go back to see this is a revolution in process process that's been going on in modern contemporary times perhaps for 250 years that we can sort of trace it back to the French Revolution through then Marx, then then the Frankfurt School and then the New Left and then, you know, all the different sort of streams of movements have spread out. Uh, Black Lives Matter, women's rights, gay rights, trans rights. Now, when I say those things, I, I'm not against equality of opportunity. Of course, I'm for equality of opportunity for everybody. But women's rights, Let's take that because some people might be thinking, oh, you started off um, talking about trans rights and, and, and how this is nonsense about the transgenderism and everyone's against it. And absolutely, you know, everyone can see this is absolute nonsense. Where I would say, you know, the one thing with women's rights that I totally disagree with is what they now call are uh, trying to um, um, promote or or rebrand as reproductive rights which is essentially abortion okay abortion is a horror in every abortion a child is killed and i'm against that totally i don't think that's right you don't have the right to kill another human being um but this is being promoted as as women's rights but that was an earlier point 
in the revolution, if you like. Um, gay rights, again. Now, uh, I, I completely agree with the Wolfenden Report, 1957, that you know people who do what they do in, the, in their own homes shouldn't be criminalized for it. They shouldn't be put in prison. They should not be chemically castrated like Alan Turing was. That was that was horrible. Um, but that was another time. OK, that was the 1950s, wasn't it? So that's 70 years ago. People still bring that up now and say, oh, you want to go back to those days? No, not at all. But the thing about gay rights is that they are have been on the forefront of the revolution. Uh, first of all, with the, the pride flag which is now turned into the progress pride flag. But what that all is all about is about normalizing these kind of behaviors and practices and normalizing it to children as well. And, and it just so happens that, OK, the trans people have got on and they're, they're, they're noisier and louder about it. But it was always like that. So you have people now setting up and saying, we're LGB without the T. Support us. Well, no, I don't um, support anything to do with this pride stuff, whether it's got trans in it or not, because it's all about going out, flaunting whatever people want to flaunt and um, bringing it out into the open and getting children involved and, and so on and all of that thing. You know, Nambler, for example, if you know what Nambler is, you can look it up. Um, which was very active in the 70s and 80s. And we don't want this kind of stuff. And the redefinition of marriage, again, that undermines family values in the same way that feminism does, but just in a different way. Yeah, it, not, <laughs> that's a, a bit of a contradiction there. They both undermine family values. They both undermine traditional family values. Um, actually, it's a, it's a different way, obviously, with with um, redefining marriage. So marriage is no longer a man and a woman. It's like all kinds of different things. And, and that's that's not right. It's only a man and a woman. That's how it should be. But people there, you know, are still trying to promote this around the world, targeting countries in Africa to change their laws uh, so that they accept redefinition of marriage as well. And the people there are still wanting to um, ban conversion therapy, which is the latest thing, which is not a right. This is actually um, cancelling free speech for people who don't agree with everything that, um, you know, the uh, gay rights lobby wants. So, you know, I, I would not tie up with, with them on that issue. But on the issue of, of the trans nonsense, well, there's a lot of agreement there um, that this gender ideology completely needs to stop and just go away because it's utter nonsense and people can see this. And, and it's our country, our countries have just become an absolute laughing stock around the world. You, you know, Russia and China will just look at this. And they, they just laugh their heads off, you know, <laughs> some are not surprisingly, um, because, you know, they're teaching kids uh, advanced calculus. We're teaching our kids um, that you can identify as a cat. What an absolute shambles. Let's make a change. Please come and join me in the Heritage Party for political resistance. We'll overturn all these laws and uh, make sure that this stops in our schools and in our wider culture as well. We need cultural and educational leadership. We don't have any from any other place. You're not going to get it from the fake conservatives because they've been pushing this in England. Labour have been pushing this in Wales. The SNP in Scotland, <clears throat> the Lib Dems and Greens fully support it. There is nobody else that will stand against this in the political realm. So please do join me, if you can, in the fight against this. We need to get into Parliament urgently to overturn this and stop it, because we have a generation of kids that are being affected by this. And, you know, where, while the, many of them are now starting to stand up against this, they're not getting a proper education in the schools. I mean, I totally support homeschooling. And I, you know, I, I applaud 
everyone who homeschools their children. But it's not possible for everybody to homeschool their children. You know, if you're if you're relatively wealthy and you've got lots of land, you know, you can you can homeschool your kids. But if you live in a tower block in, you know, in Hackney or you know the back end of Leeds or Middlesbrough, it's not so easy to homeschool your kids. So we need to save our schools. And only the Heritage Party is going to do that. So please do come and join me if you can, heritageparty.org. Just just join as a member if you can. Um, that helps me. That helps the party to grow in influence. But if you can also um, put yourself forward to be a candidate, um, please, please do. And uh, we want uh, enough people to be able to stand in every seat in Parliament so that everyone can have a choice to stand against this nonsense because no one else is going to do it thanks for listening everybody <laughs> i've made a long video today um but there we go <clears throat> that's where we are and that's what we need to do about it so please consider all these things okay have a lovely day god bless you all